as you know, the Black Ferns last Saturday night won the Women's Rugby World Cup. Uh, they beat England and the victory was in many ways the crowning achievement of several weeks of real focus and a real change in New Zealand rugby and sporting culture. That saw for reasons woke or otherwise, it doesn't really matter. Our media embraced the women's game and women's sport in general uh, in a way that we have not seen before in our culture, which has largely been rugby and bloke dominated. We've had the Prime Minister, I think, rather ridiculously calling for the Black Ferns to be played the same as uh, the All Blacks. Uh, there are reasons I think that's ridiculous, and so do many other people. But there is no doubt that women's sport has a new place in New Zealand society and is probably a decent reflection in some ways of the progress that we are making in terms of being a more inclusive and less, if you like, narrow-minded society. But what do the Black Ferns do with this success, or is it a flash in the pan? Uh, to talk about the potential from this victory, we're joined now by Marilyn Giroux. She's a sports marketing expert and senior lecturer at Massey University. Marilyn, thank you so much for joining us. Lovely to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm actually at Auckland University. Oh, Auckland University. <laughs> Sorry, my fault. My fault. I spend so much time talking about Massey University. It's in my brain. All right. First, no firstly, I just want to deal with the elephant in the room. Should... Are the mm -hmm. black ferns worth, in terms of pay, what an all black is? Is a black fern worth what an all black is? Well, um, that's always a, a, a big topic. Um, it's been like in 2017, we had the same conversation or similar. Like things have been improving. Um, look, for me, I feel like it's equal. And I think a lot of people are saying, well, for equal work, equal um, work ethics, um, equal training, we should pay them the same. Of course, the elephant is a bit, and I've worked in tennis quite a lot. It's always about revenue. So a lot of men are saying, well, we're bringing more revenue, so yeah. we should be paid more. Yeah. Um, the problem with that is that if we don't invest money in women's sports, how can we expect that the revenues are going to come. You need to invest money in order to get money. The player also needs to be paid more. We need to invest to make sure that sponsorship are coming. People are exposed to the game, so they're getting visibilities. So the problem with that logic is that if we don't invest any money, um, how can women's sports bring as much revenues if they don't get the same exposure, the same sponsorship? Well, so we need to invest money. This sounds slightly in illogical to, to me. You want them to make more money, so you spend more money, so in effect they make less money because you're subsidising them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the time. So you so can see the lack of, of logic in that. Ah, oh, the lack of logic, yes. But the thing is, the women's sport has always been a little bit as a disadvantage, a big disadvantage. That's because women men. aren't as good um, as rug at rugby as men. Ooh. <laughs> See, oh, well, now, 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 if we're, gonna, if we're going to apply this, Marilyn, if we're going to apply this, uh, I contended yesterday that Hamilton Boys High School, the top um, secondary school, first 15 in this country, they could beat the Black Ferns, right? They would, they would wipe well, the floor with the Black Ferns, Hamilton Boys High School. Would you call for the um, players at Hamilton Boys High School who probably put in as much training and was, as work, should they get paid what an all-black gets paid or what a black fern gets paid? Well, that's a little bit of a tricky one. It's the same thing, as I said, a little bit, if we apply the same logic to tennis, a lot of people were saying, well, Serena mm. Williams beats like a top 100 player, yeah. right? But Serena Williams was is the best women in sports. She attracts a lot of crowds. Yeah, People yeah. were, so are we, so that's a little bit like we cannot compare men and women in terms of physicality anyway. So it's just a different sport. So I get, I get this argument of like, but men, um, it's just a different game and it's a question mm. of physicality. So I, I get to your point of this and uh, I'm hoping that those guys, the Hamilton uh, Rugby Club, are able at some point to, no. to get the opportunity Hamilton to play Boys for Hamilton Boys High School, they're probably, probably about half of them end up being all blacks anyway, to be honest, uh, Marilyn. Marilyn, the other yeah. question in yeah. terms of marketing globally, are we seeing women's sport moving past the age of beach volleyball and pole vaulting 
and, and I'm going to be brutally honest, I think all sorts of televised sport um, is just people perving at very fit people often. Um, is women's sport becoming more marketable, more commercially viable than it was, say, 10, 15, 20 years ago? Uh, no question. Like, yes. Um, there's more people interested. I think it's a question often of visibility. As I said, if you, you're not exposed to it, you don't know what's going on. A lot of people realize, I think, um, lately that like this, the Black Ferns, like how exciting their game are. Also, all the athletes are, are really exciting. Mm. Um, so yes, there's definitely quite a, a lot of improvement. I mm. still believe that you're right in terms of attractiveness of female athletes, and that's something that I wish we move away from in terms of even sponsorship. Like, I, I hope that women are not just paid for how pretty they are. Yeah. But I mean, come on, from, Marilyn, can you explain to me why beach volleyball became an Olympic sport? <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, like, look, I'm, I'm more... Are you agreeing with... Are you ag of, Marilyn, I just want to get you <laughs> to agree with me. That was basically for sex appeal, wasn't it? Um, well, the volleyball aspects are still there, and uh, those are quite good athletes, so I cannot... Oh, like, come like on. I said, I'm, I, I'm not, not necessarily... But they attract, like, some crowds, definitely. Um, yeah. Some people want to watch this. Uh, look, we can say the same thing about breakdancing. That's going to be... In the yeah, next. but breakdancing... Is, is breakdancing going to be an Olympic sport? Conversation. Yeah, I think in Paris. Jeez. Yeah, to, 2024. So that's, but again, that's like moving, changing the game. Uh, of course, sports is always trying, so there's traditional sports, we're always trying to move forward, you know, bring the new generation. I think they're also talking about the e-sports becoming at some point um, uh, an Olympic sport because younger generation wants that. There's pros and cons to everything. Um, so I cannot... Uh, this you is see, you see we, we had a similar kind of Upswell and Black Firm support back in 2017. Uh, is this likely to go the same way? It's a hot story for a while amongst mainstream media and then we get back to, I don't know, bitching about the All Blacks poor performance and saying that Scott <laughs> Robertson should be the coast and that dominates our sports pages rather than women's sport. Well, we had definitely the same conversation around pay gap um, in mm. 2017. Things have evolved. I think we need that conversation all the time. The thing is, of course, it's not that gap and that adjustment is not coming maybe fast enough. So every time it's coming back, definitely, I hope it's not a flash in the pan, but that's often a little bit that could happen. So that's why I think the, the Black Fern now really need to work on their marketing, making sure that they stay part of the the news, that they bring their their players to the table, that they continue telling their stories, because if not, yes, it could also... Because, Just fizzle um, out. They could media, fizzle out, yeah. Yeah, and the media are really about rugby, but also mainly about the All Blacks, if we, if we look at the New Zealand um, media coverage. But I hope it continues to grow for women's sports and other types of sports. Yeah. Marilyn, I thank you very much indeed for your good nature and your time this morning, and I... Apologise for saying no you way. went to that hotbed of leftism, Massey University, rather than <laughs> Auckland. That's okay. No worries. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. That is Marilyn Giroux. She's a sports marketing expert. Okay. She was basically saying that beach volleyball. Anyone think that beach volleyball is in the Olympics for the sport? Just anyone. Anyone doesn't see it, what it is. Basically, some pervy old guys from the Olympic Committee went to Brazil or somewhere and said, yeah, we'll have a bit of that. And dressing it up as anything else is just a bloody joke, and it's dishonest. Sean, women are more often than not gender tribal. You are never going to get common sense from Marilyn. Oh, I think she knew. I think we knew what she really... She was agreeing with me.